Hi everybody, I'm Rick Beato, and today's Everything Music, we're going to talk about the single note soloing of Wes Montgomery. There's a particular solo that is, it's, it's one of my favorite solos, it's hard to pick one, but if I had to pick one, this is one of the best, if not the best, and it's completely single notes. Um, it's from the tune, The Days of Wine and Roses. The song is from the Boss Guitar record, which was released in 1963 on Riverside Records. It features Wes on guitar, Mel Ryan on organ, and Jimmy Cobb on drums. One of the reasons that the solo is so great is the motific development in it, which is one of the reasons that I want to teach it to you. And there's just some really ingenious melodic ideas. But there's also really cool reharmonization, which we're going to go over right now. I'm going to show you the what the normal harmonization is and kind of what they've done. Okay, let's take a look at the reharmonization. If you notice in the first bar, we have F major seven, so that's the same. But in the second bar, the reharmonization that is in parentheses is E flat major seven. That is a sub for E flat seven. So Wes is playing, or Mel Ryan, I should say, is playing E flat major seven in the second bar. The third measure is A minor 11, which is, you know, very commonly used as a sub for A half diminished. And we have D7 flat 9 is the same. Then in, in bar 5, G minor 7 for two bars, so that's all the same. And then B flat minor 7 to E flat 7 is the same. So the second line is, is identical. Where it changes again is in the third line. So we have an A minor 7 for the first two beats, then a very quick G minor 7 to A7 sharp 5, resolving to D minor 7, as it does in the normal progression. So that's a change. Then the next two bars are a little bit different. So we have, instead of just G minor 7 for, for the third bar in that line, and the third line, we have G minor 7 to C11. C11 would be, for example, B flat major with a C bass. And then, where the C7 is in the next bar, the last bar of the third line, we have C11, and then a quick minor 2-5 in the key of D minor, so it's E half diminished, A7 sharp 5, but it resolves to A11, okay, which would be a mixolydian stone, instead of instead of resolving to, to a minor 2-5, E half diminished, A7 sharp 5. So the A11 lasts for that, that entire bar. Then the next measure is different as well. It does a couple beats of, of B flat 13, and then it does a quick... A flat 13 passing chord to G 13. And Wes outlines that. You'll see when I get to that. The next bar, so the third measure of the fourth line, instead of G minor 7, it goes, Wes reharmonizes it with G minor 7 to A minor 7. And then the next bar is B flat minor 7 to C 7 flat 9. So it's an ascending progression of minor 7th chords. G minor 7, A minor 7, B flat minor 7, and then a uh, C7 flat 9, resolving to F major 7. So this is where we go to the second half, the B part of the tune. So the next measure, the next line is the same as the first line. So F major 7, E flat major 7, A minor 11, D7 flat 9. So that's reharmonized like it is in the first line of the song. So the next line is, is the same too, G minor 7 for two bars, and B flat minor 7 to E flat 7. Uh, next line where it goes A minor 7 to D minor 7. Wes is playing, or Mel Ryan is playing, A minor 7, and then a quick G minor 7 to A7 sharp 5 to D minor 7, like he did earlier. And then B half diminished, or B minor 7 flat 5, to B flat 13, so that's all the same. And then the, the uh, tag at the end of the song, the last line, is A minor 7, D minor 7, G minor 7, C11, that's all the same. But the turnaround, the last two bars, is different. This is a really cool turnaround. So instead of F6 for a whole bar and G minor 7 to C7 um, or C7 flat 9, Wes plays F major 7, D7 sharp 9, D flat major 7, which is a really cool substitution, and then C7 flat 9 as our turnaround. Okay, let's check out how the solo begins. It starts on the turnaround. <laughs> So the, the first two voicings that he plays before the solo starts is... So he's playing a C11, which is a B-flat major triad, with a C in the bass, and then to an F major 7 chord down here. So this F major 7 chord is A, E, C, F. Uh, it's a it's a pretty stock voicing, but you don't hear people play it that often. It's a way to, to use a major 7th chord with a root on top. 
And then he goes into the uh, turnaround. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that's the first line you're going to hear is over those chords, the turnaround. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then back to F. Okay, so check it out. Right here. Okay, so on the D7 flat 9, he goes. He's playing, he starts on the flat 9. And then he plays. Which is really cool. So on the C7 chord, he's playing. He plays a, a C sharp minor triad. Now, this is really unusual, actually. It's right out of the C sharp altered scale, if you think of. If you think of. You've got, he's, then he resolves to the third of the F major seven. It's really cool. So, so this, so that's our resolution into the top of the tune. Let's go from the first couple bars of the solo now. So what's he playing over that progression? So we got That's a great line. So he's going two through. So that line is a leading line. It resolves right to the third of the E flat major seven chord. So we got So on the E flat major seven chord, it's a really great lick. He playing to the third and then ninth, fifth, third, seven, five, six. That's great. Now one of the things is if you look at this chord shape here, you've got a G minor triad right there over E flat to give you the E flat major seven chord. And he's he's just playing right down. So Really, really great shape and resolving to the sixth. And then when he goes to the A minor 11, he goes. And he goes to the 11th of the chord. Da, 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 then. And then he's, then he's implying an A minor 7 flat 5 up here. So. To a D7 altered chord. And I'm using, <clears throat> I'm using a D7 sharp 5 there. Then he's done on the G minor, so his resolution to the G minor seven chord. So it's it's a da 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 right. But he's done, and then which is great. He slides into the ninth of the G minor chord, and that's a complete phrase. One of the things to note is da da da. Da, 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 da. He goes up the octave. Three, four. Three, four. Now that is a beautiful phrase. It just flows so naturally, and it's a natural melody. Very few people, unless they're really playing, thinking of melodies, most guitar players play positionally, and they're not going to do an octave jump in their melodic line like that. Pat Metheny will... George Benson will, Wes Montgomery will, but very few guitar players do that, are actually playing melodies like that, and that's a really great example. Let's continue on. So then on a G minor chord, he's playing... So, so the... D minor arpeggio, the D minor triad over that G minor 7 gives you a G minor 9 sound. He changes the rhythm a little. It's great, and he's... That's how I would finger it. I think that's probably how Wes fingers it, because he does a lot of... Um... And I keep telling people... Practice your major and minor triads 
because you'll see Matheny do it in the Matheny video. Well, where did he get this from? He got it from being into Wes, and he saw Wes. I guarantee you, Pat Matheny transcribed Days of Wine and Roses for sure, and he saw. He's going right down that triad there, and then. That's over the E flat seven chord. He goes. So he's, if you think about this, he's going. He's doing a pull off down from the from the third to the sus four to the ninth. Which is great. The interval uh, jumps are great. And right here is him playing. It's like a B flat minor. So he's, when he's playing E flat seven or E flat nine, he's still thinking B flat minor. He's still thinking in that Dorian to Mixolydian sound. So, so after he plays the D minor arpeggio, then he goes right into that E flat Mixolydian. So combining those ideas back to back is really really great so there's still a little bit remaining on the e flat 9 chord here uh, where he plays and he resolves to the flat 7 of a minor 7 which is going da, 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 da. So in the A7 chord, and then he resolves to the, the 11th on the on the D minor seven. Then there's a fifth of the of the D minor seven. So he's outlining a D minor triad. Once again, here's a minor triad. And he resolves to the to flat seven. So he's using this shape to that shape. So he's running on the E half diminished. Then. So you got And right here he's going. He's going on 13th to the 5th to the 13th. So. So he's using that 13th to pivot off. Right? So that's a great uh, way to... There's still a little more left on that G7 chord, the G13. He runs up the D G Mixolydian scale. To... So... So the 9th to the 5th, to the flat 7... Flat 7 to the 3rd, then... Root to the flat seven. Da -da, da -da -da, da -da. And then over the B flat minor seven, great line. There's your uh, C7 altered to flat seven. To the third of F major seven. So running down that F uh, Ionian sound, but with a passing tone, filling in the the sixth to the fifth. It's a tricky line, but once you get the fingering down, Okay, here's the second half of the solo when it returns back to F major. These, this is my favorite part. So check it out. So here's E flat major seven. So here on the E flat major seven, Wes does really unorthodox fingerings, and it sounds like he's going. He does a lot of a lot of odd fingering with his second finger. 
supposed to do? Right here? Once again, that's him playing an idea that a guitar player wouldn't typically play. It's more like a horn player. And then here's the really cool. On the, on the D7, he's playing flat five root, flat five root, flat five. So. And then on the D7 chord, right here. There's still a bit, little bit left on this D7 altered chord, he goes. He ends that phrase, right? And then... Uh, there's he does a pickup phrase is still part of that D altered sound and he does Once again, there's the octave jump Wes wasn't only an octave player in his octaves. He played them in his single notes So two, three. So this next transition to the G minor from the D altered listen So he's playing, um, he comes out of right down to G minor 9, that's G minor 9 sound. Then right up a B flat major 7 arpeggio from the 7th. And then up this octave, the second octave, same thing. Then, so that's all over G minor. Well, the first part doesn't. The first part is obviously over. Then, that's tricky to do that too. Is you have to shift positions. And Wes, if you ever watch videos of him, he's always shifting positions. That's a great line. It's right out of that shape there. Sliding into the uh, to the ninth. Really great. Then it goes down to B flat minor seven. He's in this. A flat major or B flat Dorian position there. So, and then, great, great, great line. Then it goes G minor 7, then a quick minor 2-5 to D minor 7. And he uses the minor major 7 there, and then he goes... He plays the 9th to the root, to the 5th, to the 11th, to the flat, and results to the flat 3rd on the D minor 7th chord. And I would finger it 1, 5, 2, 1. And then 3, 1. So, great, great, great line there. Then he walks you into this B half diminished chord beautifully, B minor 7 flat 5. Really great, great sound. He's, he's outlining, so you got the... So he's anticipating the chord sound. That's a big thing of Wes, is like when he's doing... Or... And then he goes to the B flat right there on the B flat 13 chord. He's going. It's a great line. It re resolves right to the 13th like that. It's, it totally gives you the sound of that chord. So 
the last four bars are kind of studying chord tones. That's your A minor 7. Comes down right. Right down to A minor 7 arpeggio. Then that comes right down to D, D minor 7. So. And then right down G minor 7. Right down. Listen to it again. And then he goes. On the C7 or the C13, he goes uh, fourth chromatic up to the third and resolve the 13. And then. So listen to you. That's right over this. To the third of that, so. Then, it comes right down. It's C, uh, sharp nine, sharp nine, flat nine, to the root, to the sharp five, third, to the root, and then fifth. But that belongs to the F major, and that's the the ending of it. That's the Days of Wine and Roses solo from the Boss Guitar, 1963 Riverside Records, West Montgomery, Mel Ryan, and Jimmy Cobb. I rarely teach solos all the way through, and one of the reasons that I taught this one is because I wanted to show you Wes's phrasing, how he leaves breaks, how he develops motifs, um, how he has really unorthodox uh, fingerings, for example, and, and interesting interval jumps, even when you do... When he does things like that with those octaves, or... And... Then... I want you to kind of get a feel for Wes's single note playing and how he's outlining the changes perfectly when he's playing with his B flat. Or all those kind of lines there where he's just outlining those chord shapes. that G minor sound over the E flat major 7 chord. All those different things. The, the octave jumps, the arpeggios, the unorthodox thing, even at the end. Right there, down that augmented arpeggio. You always want to be leading somewhere. You always want to lead the listener with your ideas. You want phrases to end and you want new phrases to pick up. And crossing the bar line with your phrases Play phrases that lead into chords. Don't wait for the chords to start to start your ideas. Play lines that lead into chord changes, just like this. That that is that is the perfect. West does that all the time. I mean, that's just part of his style. He hears melodies that way. Matheny is very similar, and I think because he studied West so much that he had that sense of of uh, that melodic sense of how to lead the listener along with your, uh, with your motifs. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. And if you're interested in the Beato book, please write me at rickbeato1 at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.